Thank you. Um, I, I guess the first place I'd start with that is um, what, what an act of follow. That, that only took about 35 minutes to get this thing going. Or, or, or what? You pitch the way you live. What do you think I mean by that? Anyone have any clue with that one? What do you think I mean by it? Anyone? Your attitude. Your attitude? Okay. I'm going to take it a step further though. I want you to think of all of your pitchers on your staff and all of your hitters on your staff right now. And I want you to think about th them as people. Right? Not as players, but as people. Right? Doesn't their personality a lot of times match up to the way they pitch or the way they play? I mean, you, you have crossover sometimes too. You have that really quiet kid who becomes an animal on the field. But the majority of your players, I think, they, 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 the way they live is the way they play. So, you know, you've got the kind of wild child guy. He's got usually a wild delivery. Um, he's usually a little bit erratic. Jeremy Sowers was a guy for me who was, you know, a few years ago that was, you know, very careful. I mean, careful is about, as, about, about, about the best way I could put it. Very careful, and, you know, he was very precise. And he threw the ball okay, but that's exactly the way Jeremy Sowers was as a player. David Price, as a player, was a big kid, and he pitched like a big kid. Right? Mikey Miner, more serious, a little bit of an introvert, that's the way he pitched. Right? And as I go from place to place and I watch pitcher to pitcher, I see that more and more and more. So knowing them as people, being able to relate to them as people before you relate to them as a, as a player, I think um, you end up getting a ton of information on that. Um, and, and you know what? Uh, there, was a long, there was a long period of time where I'm not sure that I knew my kids very well you know, at, at Vanderbilt. And I wanted to, and it wasn't like I, but, but I didn't know them the way that I, I could have or, or that I should have. Um, so you pitch or you play the way you live. These are, are my three really simple rules, right? Be real, be honest, and be there. Okay, so let's start with be real, right? Be real. What's, what's a real person? A real person for me is a, is a guy that you can see in church, at McDonald's, at a setting like this, at a bar, um, or whatever, and he's the same guy all the time. Right? He's just that, that same guy. And, and I, I think some guys change. They're like chameleons. You know, it's, um, big league guys for me are, are they're definitely this way. You know, you'll talk to them for a while, and then they'll see you again, and then they'll blow you off. And you're like, that guy's not real. You know, he's only real when he wants something from me. So as a coach, I think from a player coach standpoint, when they feel like you're real, like, and you're there every day and you're just you, right? I think they'll go miles for you. Be honest, self-explanatory, right? You have to look at a kid in the eye and you go, you know what, right now you suck. Right now you're not very good, but I'm gonna try to help you get better. Let's go to work. What can we do to, to get ourselves there? And then number three is be there. And be there means a lot of different things. Obviously, you've got to be there for practice, but it's being there for a guy for more than just baseball. It's being there for a, a guy when, you know, he breaks up with his girlfriend or when he starts crying, you know, because of uh, the, the show. He has a panic attack. I mean, it's kind of bad, but you've got to be, be there for that guy, right? So be real, be honest, and be there. And it's as simple or as complicated as that. But I think if you can do these three things, you end up being a pretty good coach.